Well, good morning, everyone, and thank you for tuning in to today's social media webinar, which is all about Periscope and Periscope Basics. Uh, before we get going, I just want to make sure that everyone can hear my audio okay, uh, that you can all see my screen. So if I could just get confirmation that, uh, that the audio is working, if everyone can just send me a comment, that would be, that would be really great. Just want to make sure that everyone can hear the audio on the webinar. I might just ask some of you on Periscope. Yeah, you're hearing it. On Periscope, you're hearing it. Great. Um, yeah, okay, good. Perfect. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Sean. Loud and clear from Vermilion, Alberta. Love it. Great stuff. Perfect. And we actually are broadcasting live on Periscope as well. So um, I'm going to be focused here on the webinar. won't be able to uh, respond to Periscope comments right away, but I will get to those later on. Um, one thing that's exciting, uh, in the past I've done these webinars through a telephone and the audio has been incredibly hit and miss. Uh, and so we have a brand new microphone that we're working with here. Uh, it's a Yeti and it's pretty exciting and it works really well, I think. So I, I'm looking forward to a lot better sound quality on these webinars as well. I have to say I'm really, really excited about today's webinar. Uh, because it's looking at an app that is brand new within the last couple months and it really has the potential to be a game changer, I believe, in terms of social media. So today we're talking about Periscope and how all of you can utilize Periscope's live streaming capabilities. So first off, just so you know who the voice is on this end of the webinar, my name is Wade Patterson and I'm the Social Media and Communications Coordinator with Remax of Western Canada. So if you ever have any questions related to social media or communications in the future, please don't hesitate to reach out and um, you can email me wpatterson at remax.net or you can phone head office here, the number 1-800-563-3622. And as I said, really excited about today's webinar, and that's for a couple of reasons. So I started with Remax of Western Canada last August, and since then I've been focusing on many kind of simple, basic, beginner type of webinars, trying to build from the ground up. So things such as Twitter 101, Facebook for beginners, getting started with LinkedIn. And of course, there have been a couple uh, slightly more advanced webinars that we've thrown into that mix, such as posting great social media content and social media tips and advice for agents. But today's webinar is the first time I've gotten uh, the chance to speak about something that's really brand new. And uh, Periscope is an app that some agents are already finding benefits from. For those of you who are just hearing about Periscope for the first time, this may be an opportunity to really jump into a new wave of social media while it's on the ground floor. Uh, you may have noticed we have a hashtag for today's webinar at the bottom of the screen. It's hashtag Remax Social. Really appreciate if we get a conversation going using that hashtag, that would be great. Um, and for those of you who are on Periscope, you can actually follow uh, today's live live stream, live broadcast, and it's through my account, and that's at Patterson Wade. Patterson just has one T. So all of a sudden, the world's pockets are full of good cameras and good screens. And that's a qu quote from Chris Saka, who was recently interviewed for a New York Times article about Periscope. Another quote from that article came from Periscope co-founder Kayvon Bakepour. He said, the world is way more ready for this than they were a year ago. We have the benefit of entering this market when people are more sold on the idea of live broadcasting. I think both of these quotes are very true because the thought of live broadcasting, it isn't a new one. And uh, the New York Times article brought up, many startups have flopped on this concept in the past. So there have been companies like You Now and Justin.TV and Ustream. But the difference now is that smartphones are ubiquitous. They're everywhere. So Periscope is something that's accessible for many more people. Another point is that Twitter recently purchased Periscope in January. So that gives uh, Periscope a pretty big boost instantly. And it also gives Twitter a new exciting relevance. So when it comes to social media, it's very difficult to know what's going to take off and what's going to flop, but there's a lot of buzz right now around Periscope. And so I figure it's a worthwhile app to check out for those who are fairly savvy with social media and who think this could benefit their business. And also getting in on the ground floor of a new app is something that can be beneficial as well in terms of gaining followers and really getting into the, the new wave early. So what is Periscope? Well, essentially, Periscope is a live broadcasting app that's owned by Twitter. So essentially, the app allows you to record video in real time to a live audience. 
The audience has the ability to comment on and like videos. As you record video, you can see on your screen what people are saying in real time. And in the bottom right hand corner, you can also see how many people are viewing your live broadcast. Um, you can follow people on Periscope and you also have followers. So in that sense, it's a little bit like Twitter. And Periscope will always show you uh, on your home screen whether or not anyone who you follow is currently broadcasting live. So I think there's a certain connection we feel with being able to see something in real time. And I think that's why this is a new platform that's worth paying attention to. Through Periscope, I can literally watch a group of friends in California who are out at a sushi restaurant. I can close that window, open up a new one who, of someone who is recording a sunset in Paris. I can watch raw footage of the riots that were happening in, in Baltimore, and then I can see a live interview with Mariah Carey. The possibilities and the variety are quite limitless, it seems, at this point. Another possible benefit about Periscope is that you have the chance to capture someone's attention. So this current fascination with being able to watch live streams makes people want to see what's going to happen next. They're, they're going to stick with your feed because they want to know what's what's going to be said next, what's going to happen if you're broadcasting at a live event. You've kind of got a behind the scenes look at what's happening. Through social media, we're often competing with so many things, but when you click on a Periscope live stream, for however long, you're simply focusing on whatever is happening in that stream. So you have a great opportunity through this app to capture your audience's attention. Prior to Periscope's launch, uh, there was a very similar app uh, that launched and it too has enjoyed a lot of early success. So that app is called Meerkat and it really gained a lot of momentum at the South by Southwest uh, Film Festival that happened in March. Meerkat is also a live streaming application that also works through Twitter. So essentially when you're live streaming, it sends out a tweet to all of your followers letting them know you're live streaming through Meerkat. Although it's probably way too early to tell which of these platforms is winning or which is better, uh, many tech blogs at this point are giving the upper hand to Periscope. So VentureBeat.com released some interesting stats uh, April 25th, and I think they kind of put into perspective who is winning the race between the two live streaming apps at this point anyways. And on a side note, there is a bit of talk that Facebook might be looking to um, acquire Meerkat, and that would, that would make things very interesting as well. Uh, so... Uh, according to VentureBeat.com, as of April 25th, Periscope was ranked 24th in the App Store for U.S. social networking, whereas Meerkat was ranked 164th. Uh, Periscope had a much stronger international presence. But one of the most telling stats that was given out, I think, was that Periscope, the average Periscope user, it takes them 15 to 30 seconds to acquire 5 to 10 viewers, whereas Meerkatters, it takes 30 seconds to 2 minutes to get the same audience. So instantly people are finding when they're broadcast through Periscope, very quickly they're acquiring decent sized audiences. Another thing to keep in mind is that Periscope is only available on iPhones. So Meerkat very recently opened it up, I believe it was last Friday they announced that they're now available on Android as well. Um, I, I think it's probably just a matter of time before uh, Periscope is also Android as well. So it's way out of my expertise to try to predict which of these apps is going to do better in the long run, but feel free to download both apps for yourself, uh, experiment with them. My feeling is that Periscope is a safe bet, but you can try each out, see works, uh, which works better for you, which you prefer, uh, and also which is getting you higher viewer numbers and more interaction. So although Periscope is brand new, there are already some Western Canada Remax agents who have started experimenting with how it works. So in the left hand side of the screen, we have a screenshot and that's of Jesse Peters and he's a realtor with Remax Executives Realty in Winnipeg, Manitoba. So Jesse has already live broadcasted on Periscope a few times. So in the picture that's shown, he held an open house, uh, a live open house, uh, He's a huge Winnipeg Jets fan. So during the first round of the series, he scoped about the Jets versus the Ducks. And so while he waited for the game to start, he talked a little bit about uh, the Jets, why the team's important to the community. And then he used that to transition and start talking about how you can, the community, how you can get set up with a great home and how to get your home ready for sale. Just, just a great opportunity to do that. On his first broadcast alone, he had 59 viewers. He's also done a live stream, which he called Behind the Scenes of a Social Savvy Listing Video. 
Michael Thorne, who many of you know from Mobile Agent TV, has also experimented with Periscope. So in the screenshot on the right, Michael had a live stream about a unique a unique way his office gets foot traffic. It's very cool. So what they do is they hide a geocache under their front porch and they've had tons of people. It's one of the most popular geocaches in BC, had tons of people go visit it. Great idea for doing a scope on that. In the middle of the screen, uh, you see uh, a screenshot of Remax Integra, so Ontario Atlantic, and they've been using Periscope at some of their Remax Connect events, which I think is going to be a huge opportunity as well when you're at these live events. Anyone can scope and give you kind of a behind the scenes of what's actually happening. So before I joined Remax of Western Canada, I worked as a reporter for three years in Kelowna. So I thought I'd dust off my interviewing skills, pick up the phone and call one of the early adopters, Jesse Peters, who I mentioned in the last slide. So I wanted to get Jesse's opinion on how he's found using the app so far. Um, the impression I got from Jesse is that overall, this is another great tool to add to your social media tool belt. One of his favorite things about Periscope is the fact you get to showcase your personality and really create a connection with your audience. So they're not seeing a polished, edited version of yourself. They're seeing raw footage, real-time video of what you're broadcasting. In terms of the Meerkat versus Periscope debate, Jesse said he has found Periscope a lot easier to understand. When asked whether or not this app is for people who are very social media savvy. Jesse actually said that he thinks it's, it's easy enough for anyone to use, um, even people who are pretty new to social media. He figured that they could probably get going with Periscope and try it out. He also talked a bit about the new life that this app has given Twitter, and I absolutely agree. Um, for some of those, myself included, at times, Twitter jargon, the way people, the language that is used on Twitter, it can be confusing for some. And, you know, a lot of us have figured it out, but some, they, they're just put off um, of Twitter initially because of that. They don't get hashtags. They don't get how Twitter handles work. Um, so this is kind of giving Twitter a new relevance. Uh, people can watch these live streams and be connected through, um, through Twitter that way. Uh, other tips Jesse gave are that proper hashtags are important. So the message you send out to announce your broadcast or any tweets you send out prior promoting your upcoming Periscope session, it's a good idea to use hashtags that are relevant and easy to find. Jesse also said a little pre-planning is a great idea. So think about something you want to talk about or that you think will provide value to your audience and then focus your Periscope broadcast around that theme. I would add that you don't have to wait for the absolutely perfect opportunity to broadcast because then you're just always going to be waiting. If you're like, oh, there's going to be this perfect event that I can do a Periscope at and then that event passes, oh, that would have been great. Well, there's another event in a month that I'll be good at. You might never end up doing it. Just It, it can be simple. You could do a Q&A session such as Ask a Realtor, something like that. Um, you, you just got to get your feet wet with this app as well, I believe. So I think the big question um, for many of uh, our real estate um, agents is going to be, what can Periscope be used for? And I've given a few examples of how others have used it, but I really think this is going to take a little bit of creativity on your part because I don't believe it's just a cookie cutter answer. I I'm hoping that you'll all, maybe through this webinar, start to think of some ideas, ways that you can use it to your own benefit. Like any social media platform though, I believe it's a good idea to still make it your goal to provide value. So right now, because the user numbers are relatively no, relatively low, sorry, it seems that any sort of stream tends to get views at this point in time. But just as, as we've seen with other social media networks, eventually people are gonna gravitate to the best content. So perhaps, um, as an agent, perhaps you could interview people in your local community live on Periscope, um, Remax Canada, so ourselves and Ontario Atlantic, we recently released the Spring Market Trends Report. So maybe you give a read through that and then you do a live scope talking about some of the specific findings for your area. Or if you've done your own market trend research, that might be a good opportunity. Allow yourself to tell people information but also be getting questions and answer them in real time. So creative thinking is going to be required to be successful on the new platform, but I really believe there's a lot of opportunities here for agents. 
All right, so getting started with Periscope is pretty easy. First off, you need to make sure you have a Twitter account. If you don't, you can easily get one, obviously visiting twitter.com. And for those who are brand new to Twitter as well, uh, last January I put together a Twitter 101 webinar, and you can find that on Remax of Western Canada's YouTube channel, um, and that'll provide you information on Twitter basics. So after you have your Twitter account set up, download the Periscope app from the App Store. And keep in mind, as I mentioned, uh, currently I believe it's still that this app just works with iPhone. So that's something to keep in mind. After that's downloaded, you can sign in using your Twitter credentials. And then you can do some exploring. And that's really how you're going to learn with this app. Periscope. Periscope's going to prompt you to add your Twitter followers, which of course is a great idea. Uh, on the first screen of Periscope, uh, the first button at the bottom, that's going to show you anyone who you follow who is currently live uh, or who has produced recent broadcasts within the last 24 hours. The second button shows global live streams. The third button on the bottom allows you to begin live streaming. And the last button will take you to the popular to popular Periscope accounts to follow. That'll also be your gateway to the search function and you can reach your own profile through that button. So last Thursday, prior to game one of the Flames Anaheim series, I tried out Periscope for the first time. Uh, I'm a huge Calgary Flames fan, by the way. And so I thought, hey, here's something that I know a little bit about and I can talk a bit about, you know, something I'm familiar with. And let me just get my feet wet with this app. And it was an interesting experience, and I'm really glad I did it because it gave me a much better perspective uh, for being able to put on this webinar even. So prior to broadcasting, you have the ability to set some of your preferences. So where Periscope says, what are you seeing now? You can write something and include hashtags, and then make sure the little, little Twitter icon is selected so that you automatically tweet that out, and it alerts everyone that you're broadcasting live. You can also set other preferences, such as whether or not just your followers can chat or whether everyone can chat. You can also create private broadcasts and choose which of your followers is able to see your stream. While you're recording, you can double tap on the screen to change whether or not you're recording with your front or rear iPhone camera. And after you're finished broadcasting, by default, Periscope will begin to upload the recording and it will be available for your followers to view for 24 hours. If something happened during that broadcast, maybe you got some comments that you weren't really keen on or it just didn't go the way you were hoping, you can click the screen or just press the screen and that's going to cancel the upload. So it's not mandatory that your upload st stays around for 24 hours. You can choose whether or not that happens. So as much of a, as I've been raving about Periscope and the possibilities of live streaming for agents, there are definitely some risks and some warnings to be aware of. So since you are broadcasting live, there's always that possibility that things can happen that are completely out of your control. So for example, if you're shooting, I don't know why I came up with this example, but for example, if you're shooting Periscope at a parade in your hometown, something like that, someone could walk by and yell an obscenity or really anything could happen just as happens in real life. Um, with recorded video, of course, you have the ability to edit things like that out. But since you're broadcasting live, those viewers who are watching, they're going to see in real time what you're recording. And as I mentioned earlier, there's some pretty great value in being able to utilize that live streaming connection. But this is one of the risks, especially considering that since Periscope is linked to your Twitter account, your social reputation, is on the line with this app. So I think you should be somewhat mindful of the places you choose to live stream from, aka a bar might not be the best <laughs> spot, especially when you're considering social reputation maybe on the line. A second point worth mentioning is that Periscope recordings, since they are live streams, are typically lower quality and much less polished than other videos you can record and choose to edit. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, but you might want to keep in mind that if you have a poor Wi-Fi signal, that's really going to hurt the quality of that, screen, of that stream. I've tuned into a few scopes where it just constantly keeps going off every few seconds, and that can be distracting for those who are trying to tune into what you're broadcasting. So on the screen now, you're going to see a screenshot of the first time um, that I, my first attempt at using Periscope. And I use this example somewhat in a joking fashion. So as my broadcast was called, uh, a Calgary Flames fan in Kelowna. The first commenter uh, said, ducks in four, implying that we were going to be swept by Anaheim. And until last night, I 
they might have been right, but it was a huge game last night. Anyways, uh, I'm not saying at all that this is a rude comment. It was actually funny. Uh, it stirred up the conversation and got a little bit of banter going back and forth. But trust me, some of the comments I've seen on Periscope watching others' live streams uh, have been much ruder, much more harsh, and really inappropriate at times. And unfortunately, I've especially seen these comments fly at women um, as a majority, which, you know, it, it's sad to say that that's happening, but but it's just from, from what I've seen, it is a reality at this point. Um, so to be honest, the fact that you log on to uh, Periscope through Twitter, I had high hopes that maybe people would feel their reputations are on the line when commenting, but I guess in the end of the day, anyone can create a fake Twitter account or anything like that. So you have to be aware that there are going to be those people who are putting out rude comments. But there are tools in place that you can utilize. So as you broadcast live, you have the, you have the ability to block others who are viewing your stream. And I think when it comes to this type of medium for broadcasting, it should honestly be a one strike and you're out rule. Because um, So please don't be hesitant to block others um, if they are posting obscene things, rude things. Because one of the reasons is when you're recording, when somebody watches what you have recorded live um, or in the next 24 hours, they see all the comments as well. So if you have someone who's continually commenting and saying just ridiculous things, that's going to show up in your recording, and it can really ruin a broadcast in many ways. So please don't be hesitant to block someone if they are commenting inappropriately. You can also control your settings, as I mentioned before, before you begin broadcasting. Um, but I, I think it, Periscope works well by not limiting your audience. I think you want to open it up, and, and that's a great way that you can find new followers as well. So from what I've seen so far, this is one of the downsides of using Periscope, but hopefully as the app gets more users, there will be more ways to weed out the inappropriateness. One final piece of advice I'd like to share, and thank you to the six viewers on Periscope who have stuck around and everyone who is still in the actual webinar, really appreciate it. Uh, the final piece of advice is that I think it's a great idea to have a subject or an idea before you begin broadcasting. So I've seen a few people just do general Q&A sessions, and that's not terrible. Um, you might get a great conversation out of that, but the problem I think there's two problems with that. The first is that um, by w opening it up like that, you might be lending yourself more to those inappropriate comments because then people will just talk about really anything. But also, I think if you have some sort of topic in mind, you can always get off trap of off track of that comment, but initially, you, you just it's a good way to steer the conversation, so you're not just sitting there looking at your screen waiting for somebody to ask you questions. So it's a great idea to have a bit of a plan in place. You don't have to overthink it. You can do something very simple, maybe just even, even if you wanted to do a Q&A session, you could do a Q&A session about real estate, and while you're waiting for questions, you could talk a little bit about what's happening in the market. Um, yeah, so from what I've seen so far, streams are a lot more interesting to watch if something's happening or at least there is a topic to guide the conversation. Well, that brings me to the end of the webinar. Um, I want to thank everyone so much uh, who took the time to tune in. I don't see any questions at this point in time, but if anyone does have any questions, please feel free to ask. And I'll be sticking around for a couple moments here on the webinar and also through Periscope. Um, not seeing a lot. Oh, appreciate the comments on Periscope. <laughs> so hard to keep my attention. Well, if that's it for the webinar, I really appreciate everyone tuning in. Hope you have a great Wednesday. Uh, enjoy.